Do a brick column in there, yep, and put a footing in it. Don't matter, that'll do. And put a footing in the next one. Yep, and let's go timber post. So, guys, what I'm talking about here is assigning subcontractors, trades people to tasks instead of actually putting uh, a, a, a labor rate. So, with bricks, usually we go per thousand, give it to a bricklayer. But on a small job like this, one column, a bricklayer is not going to want a thousand rate because it's not going to be correct. Or to put one post in, you couldn't say, you know, the same rate. So, just get takeoff for me, please, Grant. And I'm going to show you guys, or Grant's going to show you guys how we're going to uh, assign labor per hour to these things. So let's just go to the framing, mate. Okay, edit some more, yep. Okay, and we've got one timber post, 150 by 150 at the top there. And we want to add uh, some labor rates for this to just go out to site and do it, right? So I'd be a one-time value. So click one-time value below your mouse, yep. Uh, and we're going to put a, a labor rate for the entire fit this timber post. So so it would be some notes. You'd probably say uh, dig a hole, install concrete. Uh, yep, so write that in, please, Grant. Dig hole, uh, install concrete, bag, go to hardware. I don't know. You can put these in as separate things. But you could just put it all in for say it was someone who was going to work for you in your business. Um, so he's going to install the post grant. So so it needs to be written in there what he's going to install. You've got install group. Please go back and change that. Install timber post. And you can take a screenshot of it or whatever. Yep. Timber post. Yep. Yep. Okay. And we're going to assign uh, two people to it. Yep. What kind of people are they going to be? So... These, if we can only choose a tradesman, right? So go click tradesman. So two tradesmen seems a bit excessive. So what we might do is go one tradesman. Yeah, and one apprentice. So we're going to duplicate the recipe. Right? And the next one is going to be one apprentice. Yep. Okay. Now you could also put the subcontractors. Click on your subcontractors there, Grant. Yeah, and make a carpenter. Yep. And carpenter. Okay, now the apprentices need a rate and the tradesman needs a rate. And you'll notice because this hasn't been done before in the version grant showing us, we need to change the rate grant. Uh, there we go, manage trade. So your tradesman is going to be $85 an hour grant. Yep, and your apprentice, let's say, give 45 And let's just say, let's add a new line as well there while we're there. And we might just call apprentice second year, apprentice third year. Yep, and so apprentice second year, we're going to charge him out at 55 an hour. Yep, 55, and we're going to make the next apprentice 65. Right, okay, and make the top one first year. Right, so so guys, these this is typical of what would actually happen in a business, a small business. Therefore, now you'll notice that we're going to change it to a first year apprentice is $45 an hour at a charge out rate. And we also have uh, a tradesman there. And therefore, this is what we're going to pay him to do that. Okay, so uh, let's just go up to the top, Grant. Uh, put put in some um, cost codes there for it, please, as well, mate. Uh, and just go 17, 8 frame on both. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, just quickly go up and generate a report for me, please. So we've allowed for, we've only allowed for one hour per tradesman there. Hold on our rates, are our rates through there yet? Nothing yet, no. Let's link it with the no, item. You don't need to link an item. You just need to have an, a, a number, the amount of hours. Okay, so there's not, we haven't put a number of hours in there. Uh, yep, uh, so how many hours is it going to take that tradesman? Well, let's just say we're going to allow four by the time they travel. So four hours and four hours for the apprentice. Right, okay. Now we have a rate associated. You'll notice down the bottom there. Uh, and we're going to generate a report. Yep, Carpenter. And the only thing in this job so far is that. Yep. Generate. Okay. Right. So now you would give this to your Carpenter on this particular job and the, they would know what's required. Right. There is... Uh, now, let's go back to the brick column as well because we got a brick column and the Carpenter can't lay that. So let's go back to the bricks, masonry. Yep. And we're going to say lay brick column. We would order the materials elsewhere. 
Yep, that'll do. Okay, and how long is it going to take him to do that? Let's just say a, uh, a bricky and apprentice mixing the mud would be three hours each. Uh, so who was that one? Was it, uh, uh, so three hours. And the number of hours? Three. three. Yep. And we're going to duplicate the recipe as well, but sign it to a, a, a tradesman. Yep. And we're going to give him an apprentice, so duplicate him apprentice. Right, and you can change these for different apprentice types. Right now, in the vendor, put in brick, uh, put in your bricklayer. Yep, bricklayer. Yep. Okay, and uh, we're going to go down to brickwork. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. So now, when we go to generate reports, this could just be a one-time value too, guys. By the way. And I probably would suggest it would be a one-time value, but we haven't linked it to anything. Therefore, it'll always show up. But if you only ever do this small type of job once, it wouldn't be a one-time value. Now we have a purchase order for the bricklayer, right? Therefore, to get the job done that you see on the inside of SketchUp, we can now just as quickly associate people and the different genre of person, for instance, apprentice or so on. But it might also be that you have to do a council inspection. So just close that uh, down again for me, Grant. So you could actually go into your managed trades and you could put your inspections in here. So add a new line, might be engineer inspection. Okay, and it's $150. Right, so he might have to certify something. Okay, so save and submit. Yep. Okay, so inside of here, we might also go, uh, we could uh, duplicate and we could just change the text to inspect footings on column. Right, and yep, and uh, on the, yep, and make it more one time values too, mate, just so these don't keep coming up. So the reason why we click one time value is that next time you do a bill of quantities, this is not going to come up because this is a one time job scenario. All right, so create your purchase orders for that. Uh, yeah, inspect footings. I would actually put that under concrete, actually. Mm -hmm. Slab, yep, that's right. Okay, so now we have purchase orders we can create for these people, and there's only going to be one one on one because he's charging per inspection. Right, therefore, it's $150 per inspection. Obviously, if there's multiple inspections, you would put in multiple. You can also link these items just as you do with the normal recipe at the top, but we wouldn't link this one. It doesn't kind of make sense. However, uh, maybe to get the sand and cement, so let's go to the uh, and add in some yep recipes for that and sand and cement. Oh, yeah, sand, yep, and cement. Okay, so so what we're going to do is we need uh, five bags of cement per thousand bricks. Whatever your ratio is, guys, this is not uh, telling you how to build. It's now we're going to link that item to the number of bricks. So you need to put the number of bricks per square meter. Grant, not that's the square meters of bricks. So how many items per square meter? There's fifty. Write in forty nine point five. Yep. Okay. Right. And now we have 131 bricks, right? Therefore, we now know that we've got to order X amount uh, of numbers of bags. So we need one bag of, of cement. So right, 20 kilogram bag of cement on the left there where it says cement. Yep. 20 kilogram bag. That'll do. Okay. This could also be a one-time value as well. Right, we can associate that with all bricks. So just show them what, what that just happened there, Grant, because we don't want to have to continue to do this recipe all the time. So we can click, yes, we want to associate it with multiple types of bricks. Now, every brick that's the same size you would select, right? So just, just there we go. And you would take off, so obviously take off acrylic render, the top, the top two, you don't need them. And yeah, there's a few. So go through this, put in a, a, a um a category name. So this is going to be cement for standard size brick. Guys, this is all to do with estimating that we would always do on a job and saving it for next time means that if we go to a more complex uh, file, it will very quickly do what we need to do. You need to put in a, a unit price, a uh, bag of cement, $7.50. Right, and it's going to come from a hardware supplier. Yep, uh, yep. I mean, company is fine, doesn't matter. Yep. 
Okay, so now we've associated the cement. The same could happen with the sand. I don't think we need to do that twice. Um, and, and and for every time we always draw it, remember this. Now, you can save these recipes uh, for different genre types or different geolocations or so on. There's another video for that. Uh, Grant, let's quickly just uh, go over to, or just quickly generate reports for me. You'll notice now when we generate reports, we have three people that need to deliver something on this project. So, and if you click on the hardware supply company, and go submit. All right, it didn't have a cost code, therefore it's saying, hey, you didn't give me a cost code. Would you like to report an item uh, without cost codes? I'm gonna say yes, because I don't need to, All right? And therefore I can go up the top and save the report. All right, so this is giving me the, I need a bag of cement. Yep, okay, All right, new report. Yep, and you go to the bricklayer now and do his. And therefore you can have all of your reports there. What's he gonna do, the brickwork, yep. And the slab as well. So you could you could have selected multiple there and had him do the slab and everything in one purchase order. Therefore, you've got an agreed rate that you're actually saying, hey, I'm sending you this purchase order. It means that I want you to do X for X amount of dollars. It's better than sending out a quote to a bricklayer and saying, ah, oh, could you come back with me or a price? And he goes to the pub and then doubles the price. Purchase orders are a really good way to do that. Um, so I hope that uh, explains that. Yeah, so the round section there. So notice... When Grant tried to order a bag of cement, it wasn't rounded, right? So we need to round it to the nearest one, right? If you could only buy concrete in bags of five, you would type five in there and that might be your minimum order. Same with nails, do you know what I mean? Anyway, one is our number. Okay, so one bag of cement. There's also might be delivery or you might even write in the bricklayer's purchase order to supply the, the thing and therefore change the vendor to the bricklayer. All right, Grant, let's, can we just quickly duck over to the, the demonstration tutorial model? And we'll just explain this one more time because I think this is going to be very helpful for... Uh, so let's let's just quantify the frame on here. So let's go to structure. Right. And we actually really only want to do the wall. So let's click take off. All right. Okay. And we're going to go to framing. Click on framing tab. Yep. Okay. Now I just want to. Uh, so you got advanced framing. Turn that off. Let's turn advanced framing off because we just want to quantify not the length of the material but the labor. Uh, framing. Yep. Uh, go show me model. Can you go back, please? Show me model. Okay. Righto. Now, now we can let stand back and let the dog see the rabbit. Now I can see how many walls that need to be done, and you might even go to two D mode on here, Grant, so we can see it. This is the way we would traditionally look at a wall. Now, we could dimension it and so on, but most of us who are framers would know how long it's going to take to put that type of frame together. And I can quite easily look at that and say, eight hours, two men. So let's go into the edit, see more inside of there, Grant. All right, go down to the bottom. Uh, and we're going to add some subcontractors. All right, so add new. Right. We would exclude the top one. So see where it says exclude that, right? So therefore, we're not going to do it this way. And we're going to go put in a cost code, 17A frame. Yep. And we're going to say uh, stand frames on single story. Yep. Okay. Now, I can see we're going to need two carpenters uh, and one apprentice. Tradesman. Yep, and we need two of them, and it's be eight hours each. Yep, okay, now we got our prices coming up pretty quick, and one apprentice. Now we can see, now obviously, yep, carpenter. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay, so, so now we can just create a, a purchase order for the carpenter on this job. Now, I'm, I'm assuming that it has a... Yep, generate reports, Carpenter, 17A frame. Yep. All right, stand frame, single story. Uh, we've got eight hours. Notice that it didn't report there was an apprentice or something there. Maybe that's an update we, we need to actually do there, Grant. Mm -hmm. What happens when you click on the little drop down there on the right? Because I think that really it should have said for a cut, but, but for the moment, guys, ooh, control said that. Yep. Okay. Just type in there, Grant. 
Furnace. Carpenter. Raidsman. We will uh, add this guy when it, get, uh, when it gets out of beta and apprentice. Yep. Okay. Uh, and we've got a job address in there. We've got everything we needed to do to be there, uh, who the vendor is and so on. If we added a job address, we haven't got the ship to, but that would be if you add that in. Just quickly show how to add a job address, please, Green. Yep. Okay. And then just go and type in your job address here. And your supervisor name or anything else that you need your subcontractors to know. What's going on there? All right. All right. So, so you can see that example job is there and everything like that. He's going to change it, submit it, update it, save the purchase order, send it to the subcontractor alongside of either a simple screenshot of the plan, or it could be in 3D or whatever. Yep. Okay. So we've now got that in there. So, uh, Grant, just quickly show people how to do a screenshot of that uh, of the, the the model itself, so they can accompany it with the the purchase order. Yep. So you might you would dimension it. Obviously, we're not going to get to that. Yep. All right. You can just click print screen on your on your, your computer, or just use any screenshot program. Snapshot. Okay, there it is. There and yep. Bring it into whatever it is. Yep. Drag that back out on the right as well, just so we have got some white space. Uh. Just drag the right hand side out for me now, please. Yep. Yep. A bit more, please. Okay. Put click plus. So guys, this is fast and capture plus on the right hand side, Grant. Yep. Turn it into um just turn the model, please, so we can see it. There we go. Right out. Now, obviously, guys, you can spend more time in getting this right. Take another screenshot of that. Yep. Okay, copy it, control C, paste it. There we go. Righto. So the subcontractor is going to do that. And even if you want to, you could even screenshot the purchase order and put it all in there. This is a really good way to explain to the subcontractor what they're going to do. They can look at it and go, yeah, I agree. That's eight hours. If they say it's 10, they come back to you at quoting stage, no problems. At quoting stage, we'll add 10 hours in there, update the customer quote, and away we go. It's 18 minutes, guys. I think it's a bit to take in, but I think that if you use your imagination, you'll understand how to utilize this tool to get your jobs more or more accurately estimated, I guess. Uh, Grant, is there anything I missed with that that you want to add? No, I think you've hit the nail on the head with everything there. All right, good. Thanks. Right, cheers, guys. All right, guys, if you like the video, push like. If you dislike the video, push dislike and um, tell us why. Cheers. All right, up.